The final ship of the South American Dreadnought race was ordered by the same nation that had started it all, Brazil. After selling Rio de Janeiro to the Ottoman Empire, the Brazilian government apparently temporarily forgot that one of the main reasons for the sale was that they'd run out of money, and they asked Armstrong and Vickers to prepare designs for newer, bigger, and more expensive battleships. Something that did, however, score them plenty of points with the politically influential Navy League of Brazil. There was, however, a certain logic to their actions. The Rio de Janeiro would have outgunned the Argentine Rivadavia and Moreno, but the Chilean Almirante La Torre and Almirante Cochrane would have in turn been significantly more capable. The money from the sale was therefore mostly diverted to the purchase of this new ship, which needed to be capable of beating the Chilean ships. This resulted in the submission of a no less than 14 designs between the end of 1913 and the beginning of 1914, with the speed of the designs ranging from 22 to 25 knots, and the armament ranging from 8 to 10 guns of 14, 15 or 16 inch calibre. Likewise, displacement varied significantly from 26,000 to 30,500 tonnes. Some of these proposals bear a bit of a closer look. Armstrong Proposal A was basically an Almirante La Torre class with an additional sixth twin 14-inch turret, thicker armour, and more AA guns. Two sub-variants were proposed, a slower one with mixed oil and coal fuel, and a faster one with only oil fuel that would get to 24 and a half knots. Other designs submitted were more sketch than fully detailed, but included what was basically the HMS Iron Duke, with five twin 13.5-inch guns replaced with twin 15-inch guns, and increased engine power for 24 to 25 knots top speed. Another was an enlargement of this design, which somewhat resembled the original hull of the Japanese Kaga design almost a decade later, and lastly, one which used the bigger hull of the Not Kaga combined with six turrets like Proposal A, but with 15 inch guns instead of 14 inch guns. But with 25% of tax revenue going on the Navy, the Brazilian government remembered it didn't have unlimited funds, and Armstrong Design 781 emerged as the winner. This was an eight gun ship equipped with 15-inch weapons, which shared a number of similarities with the British Queen Elizabeth and Revenge-class battleships. This ship would have had a maximum length of 660 feet, a 94-foot beam and a 28-foot draft, displacing 30,500 tonnes and armed with the aforementioned 15-inch guns in four twin turrets, two super-firing forward and two super-firing aft. An incredibly heavy secondary battery would have been installed with 14 6-inch guns in casements, along with a further 10 4-inch guns. Six 3-inch anti-aircraft guns and four 3-pounder saluting guns, plus a couple of torpedo tubes, completed the ship's armament. The main armour belt would be 13.5 inches thick, with 40,000 shaft horsepower driving four screws for a speed of 22.5 knots. This would have been a highly formidable ship, just as heavily armed as either the Queen Elizabeth or Revenge classes, with a speed midway between the two and a massive secondary battery that, whilst in itself of somewhat questionable value, would have provided plenty of spare displacement for upgrades later in its career if this was removed and replaced by decent dual-purpose weapons. This ship would then be ordered under the name Riachuelo on the 12th of May 1914. Whilst materials were gathered in anticipation of a keel-laying ceremony on the 10th of September, the start of the First World War in August delayed plans, as did an ongoing financial crisis in Brazil, and Riachuelo was officially suspended on the 14th of January 1915, and cancelled on the 13th of May 1915, thus bringing to an end the final chapter of the South American Dreadnought Race. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to tag your question with Q&A if you want to leave a question for the dry dock.